Patreon alert! Patreon alert! It's come to my attention that some of you actually like my videos for whatever reason. So I've decided to test drive a little Patreon for this channel. If you like my content and you want exclusive updates, shout outs, and early access to future unironic videos, please consider supporting me for as little as $1 a month. And maybe one day, you can be unironic too. Just not quite as unironic as me. <clears throat> okay, now for a video that I waited way too long to upload, but I hope you still enjoy hearing me complain. Hey, I'm Jonah Who from Jonah Who, and you're watching Jonah Who. So, A Christmas Story was a movie that I had not watched until this Christmas. And nobody else in my family had seen it either, so on Christmas Day, we all gathered around the living room TV and put it on. Uh, I'm not sure how I managed to avoid hearing anything about this movie for 17 years, despite its popularity. But going into this movie, my slate was completely blank. I had no clue what to expect. Cause like, A Christmas Story, could not be more vague of a title. Actually, the only way you could make this title more vague is to remove the Christmas part and just call it a story. But anyway, after the end credits rolled, we all kind of just looked at each other and agreed, yeah, that was stupid. So then I started thinking to myself, did I watch the wrong movie? Cause like I could have sworn I've heard numerous people talking about how magical and uplifting and heartfelt this movie is. I looked at user reviews on IMDb and Letterboxd to find pretty much the same sentiment repeated again and again. So now I just feel like I'm in crazy town because A Christmas Story is legitimately one of the dumbest movies I've ever seen. And obviously I don't care if you do like this movie, every opinion is valid. But for me, it just felt like everything was pointless, there was no lesson learned, and it wasn't even that fun to watch. Like, I don't know if it's rose-colored glasses or something, but do you guys actually remember what happens in this movie? Here's what happens. Our main character is nine-year-old Ralphie Parker. This year for Christmas, Ralphie really wants a Red Ryder 200 milligram 360 bolt action sniper rifle or something. No, no, I want an official Red Ryder combination 200 kill. And that's basically the entire plot. Yeah. Like seriously, that's all that's in the description for this movie on IMDb. In the 1940s, a young boy named Ralphie Parker attempts to convince his parents, teacher, and Santa Claus that a Red Ryder 200 blah 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 blah, blah is really the perfect Christmas gift. That is all that this movie cares about. So when it was revealed that this was basically gonna be the entire movie, I thought to myself, okay, Maybe he's gonna get into some shenanigans trying to buy the gun himself after his parents tell him he can't have it. Like maybe he's gonna find some funny ways to make money on his own. Maybe he'll get his friends involved in his efforts to get the gun. Maybe the bully character will also get involved and try to like, I don't know, sabotage his plans. Maybe he'll have some emotional reconciliation with his brother or his parents. And maybe after he finally gets the toy he's wanted for so long, he'll realize, oh wait, Christmas isn't about the presents underneath the Christmas tree. It's about drive, it's about power. We stay hungry, we devour. <laughs> no, like it's about family and loving one another and giving season and love, something like that, something like that. Maybe this movie will be even remotely worth my time. But no, after Ralphie's parents tell him he can't have the gun, like his friend gets his tongue stuck to a pole and that doesn't weigh on the plot at all. Ralphie says the F word in front of his parents and then lies about having heard that word from his friend and he faces no consequences for this. Ralphie's dad gets this giant lamp shaped like a leg and his parents argue over it and that goes nowhere. Ralphie beats up the bully character and it still doesn't weigh on the plot at all. And while all of that's happening, the vague motivation of Ralphie wanting the gun kind of ties everything together. Like Ralphie writes an essay to his teacher about how much he wants the gun. He goes to tell this mall Santa that he wants the gun. None of it helps. So then right before the Christmas morning scene, I was like, okay, how are they gonna save this? Cause there's no way Ralphie just doesn't get the gun. And I was right, he did get the gun, but like, it's just there. Yeah, did you get everything you wanted? Mm -hmm. What's that over there behind the desk? Like his parents just changed their minds, cause, because Christmas, I guess? So cool, whatever, happy ending. The movie can just end here, right? No, of course not. Ralphie then takes his gun outside, shoots his glasses off, and then steps on them. Oh, no. 
So at this point, I was like, oh, this is where Ralphie's gonna learn something. He didn't listen to everyone telling him that the gun was a bad idea, and now he broke his glasses. He's gonna learn a lesson. This movie's gonna have a point after all. But no, Ralphie, the little sh he lies again. Like instead of owning up and telling his mom that it was his own dumbass fault that he broke his glasses, he, he he's like, oh mom, it was an icicle that hit my face. And it's like, dude, am I supposed to like you? And in the last five minutes, I was still hoping against hope that Ralphie would learn anything. Like, please let him get called out for his lying. But no, like a bunch of dogs come over and eat their turkey. So then they go out for Chinese food. And uh, this scene happens. Yeah, that's a big yikes from me. Then we get a shot of Ralph going to sleep with his gun. There's like peaceful music playing over this bullshit monologue as if they're trying to hit us in the fields in the last 10 seconds of the movie. The greatest Christmas gift I had ever received or would ever receive. And then that's the end. That's what happens in a Christmas story. Why does anyone like this movie? I'm genuinely curious because I'm actually angry at how pointless that movie was. And to be utterly fair to this movie, I did like some bits here and there. The running joke of you'll shoot your eye out was pretty amusing. There's a few funny scenes. Most of them are Ralph's dream sequences. They do do a good job portraying his wild imagination. Also, there was the part with the crass mall Santa who kicked Ralphie in the face. That was, that, that was funny. I got a kick out of that. But everything else is almost entirely disconnected with, like, no overarching story. And the narration from the older version of Ralphie, while entertaining at some parts, very clearly shows a complete lack of connection between every scene. Again, if you like this, fine. I could see someone enjoying this as, like, a fun look into the life of a nine-year-old on Christmas in the 1940s. But this just doesn't work as a Christmas movie. When you say Christmas classic, what comes to mind? It's a wonderful life. Home Alone, Elf, Die Hard. All of them, along with their fun shenanigans, have a deeper message about the true meaning of the Christmas season. I can't even begin to imagine what the moral of this movie would be. No one has a character arc. No one learns anything. As far as I can tell, there was no attempt at even having emotional scenes. But even giving them the benefit of the doubt that like, like maybe they didn't want to make like a super feel good movie. Maybe they just wanted to make a fun movie. It just doesn't bring enough to the table on its own to justify its existence. It doesn't have funny characters like an elf. It doesn't have iconic scenes or quotable lines like Home Alone. It doesn't have a unique premise like It's a Wonderful Life. It doesn't even have a good title. Like give me something to work with here. I cannot stress to you enough how pointless everything that happens in this movie is. Like, Ralphie's really excited about getting this decoder thing in the mail, but once he decodes the code, he just forgets about it for the rest of the movie. They set up this bully character, but after Ralphie beats him up, he just disappears for the entire third act. They established that embarrassing pink bunny costume, and I thought, oh, maybe his friends are gonna see him wearing that. But no, it just never shows up again. Uh, I did enjoy the little brother with the puffy snow jacket, though, so... Christmas classic. I'm giving a Christmas story a 4 out of 10. Like, this might be the single most overrated movie I've ever seen. Uh, I'm actually realizing that A Christmas Story is actually the perfect title for this movie because the fact that it takes place around Christmas is probably the most enticing part of this story. Like, they probably had a list of titles like BB Boy, Ralphie Gets the Gun, A Ching Chong Christmas. But then they were like, no one's gonna fucking watch a movie where all the main kid does is want a gun and that's the whole movie i am begging you if you are one of the many people who considers a christmas story to be a christmas classic tell me why because the popularity of this movie actually baffles me like i can't be alone in this there's no way it really seems to me like this movie is trying to tell us that a lying will get you out of any trouble with no repercussions and b you can only be happy on christmas if you have a really cool present and call me crazy but I don't think that's good. None of the other characters had any influence on Ralphie. None of the characters changed at all from the beginning to the end. I am trying so hard to find a redeeming quality in the writing department, 
I just can't do it. The plot holes are so gapingly large and the ending is so unsatisfying. How am I the first one I've heard to talk about this? But I might be missing something. I don't know. <sighs> anyway, that's all I wanted to say. Happy New Year, I guess. Um, be sure to do all the stuff that makes YouTube show this video to more people. And if you don't, I will shoot your eye out. See ya.